Is it possible that the relationship between humanity and evil is similar to the relationship between the ocean and an iceberg floating on its surface? The Three-Body Problem by Sixin Liu In the heart of Beijing, during the peak of the Cultural Revolution, a crowd had gathered. Banners with revolutionary slogans fluttered in the air as the struggle session commenced. Ye Wenjie, a young astrophysics graduate, stood amidst the throng, her eyes locked onto the makeshift stage where her father was being publicly humiliated. Accused of being a counter-revolutionary, he was beaten mercilessly until life left his eyes. The crowd roared in approval, but Ye Wenjie felt a part of her soul shatter. Marked as the daughter of a traitor, Ye's career in academia came to an abrupt end. She was exiled from her university and sent to a labor camp in Inner Mongolia. There she toiled under the harsh sun, her hands calloused, her spirit waning. But fate had other plans for her. One day she was approached by two military physicists, Yang Weining and Lei Cheng, who offered her a way out a position at a top-secret facility known as the Red Coast Base. Curiosity piqued, Ye Wenjie accepted the offer and was soon transported to the isolated facility, hidden deep within a mountain range. The Red Coast was unlike anything she had ever seen. It was a sprawling complex filled with advanced machinery, giant antennas, and a team of scientists and military personnel operating in utmost secrecy. Officially, the project aimed to use high-powered radio waves to interfere with enemy communication and damage spy satellites. However, Ye soon discovered that this was merely a cover. As she delved deeper into her work, Ye uncovered the project's true mission, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. The Red Coast was sending out signals into the cosmos, hoping for a response. Ye was fascinated but also skeptical. Could they really make contact with an alien civilization? And if they did, what then? Weeks turned into months, and Ye became increasingly involved in the project. She began to experiment with new methods to amplify the signals they were sending. Utilizing her knowledge of astrophysics, she discovered a way to use the sun's microwave cavities to amplify outgoing radio waves, thereby increasing the chances of the signals reaching distant galaxies. One fateful night, as she was reviewing the signal logs, she noticed an anomaly, a sequence of numbers that didn't fit any known natural phenomena. Her heart raced as she cross-referenced the data. The conclusion was inescapable. They had received a message from space. The message was complex, a mathematical labyrinth, but Ye was up to the task. After weeks of relentless work, she decoded it. The message was from Trisolaris a planet in a distant star system. It was a civilization far more advanced than humanity, but one facing an existential crisis due to the unstable orbits of its three suns. The Trisolaran message contained a warning from a pacifist individual within their society. The message was clear. Do not respond. If you do, we will locate your planet and we will come. Our world is dying and we are in search of a new home. Your invitation would be an act of war against your own kind. Ye Wenjie was at a crossroads. The weight of her next action would tip the scales of human history. She pondered the state of her own civilization, the cultural revolution, the death of her father, the wars, the environmental degradation. She thought about the potential for humanity to change, to evolve, but then she also considered its history a tapestry of repeated mistakes. In a moment of profound disillusionment, Ye Wenjie made her choice. She responded to the Trisolaran message, inviting them to Earth. She reasoned that perhaps humanity needed an external force to unite them, to push them toward evolution, even if that force was a potential invader. Or perhaps, she thought, humanity was a failed experiment that needed to be reset. To ensure the secrecy of her act, Ye Wenjie took another drastic step. She sabotaged the Red Coast's communication logs and eliminated two key personnel who could have traced the outgoing message back to her. It was done. The message was sent and the die was cast. Ye Wenjie sat alone in the control room, staring at the screen that had just sent a message across the stars. 
she felt a strange mixture of dread and relief, as if a burden had been lifted and yet a new one had been placed on her shoulders. She didn't know whether she had just saved humanity or condemned it. All she knew was that she had irrevocably altered its destiny. Decades have passed since Ye Wenjie's fateful decision, and the world has moved on, oblivious to the cosmic die that has been cast. In this new era, Wang Miao, a professor of nanotechnology, finds himself entangled in a mystery that defies explanation. A series of prominent scientists around the world have been committing suicide, leaving behind cryptic messages and a trail of unanswered questions. Wang Miao is approached by Shu Chang, a detective known for his unconventional methods and keen instincts. Shu, often referred to as Da Shu, is a man of few words but many insights. He has been tasked with solving the suicides and believes that Wang's expertise in nanotechnology might hold the key. Reluctant but intrigued, Wang agrees to join the investigation. As they delve deeper into the lives of the deceased scientists, a pattern begins to emerge. All the victims were involved in cutting-edge research that pushed the boundaries of human understanding. Yet, each had reached a point in their work where they encountered inexplicable phenomena, anomalies that defied the laws of physics. It was as if they had stumbled upon a cosmic secret so unsettling that it drove them to end their lives. Wang and Shi visit the families of the deceased, comb through their research papers, and even replicate some of their experiments. But each clue only deepens the mystery. Wang starts to feel the weight of the investigation, both intellectually and emotionally. He becomes obsessed with a mathematical equation that appears in the research of multiple victims, an equation that seems to hold a dark truth. As the investigation progresses, Wang begins to experience strange occurrences. His perception of time distorts, and he starts seeing a countdown in his vision, a sequence of numbers that seems to be leading to a specific moment. Troubled and disoriented, he consults with Shi, who advises him to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. It's then that Wang is introduced to a virtual reality game called Three Body, recommended to him by a mysterious contact within the scientific community. The game, he is told, might offer some insights into the enigma they are facing. Intrigued yet skeptical, Wang decides to enter the virtual world, not knowing that this decision will pull him into a much larger cosmic drama that ties back to Ye Wenji's message to Trisolaris. Wang Miao sits before his computer, apprehensive yet curious as he launches the virtual reality game known as Three Body. The game promises to simulate a world unlike any other, a world bound by the unpredictable gravities of three suns. As he dons the VR headset and enters the game, he finds himself transported to a civilization on the brink of chaos. The game world is a vivid, intricate simulation of Trisolaris, the planet that Ye Wenjie had contacted decades earlier. It is a world where the laws of physics are not constants, but variables, subject to the whims of its three suns. Civilizations rise and fall in cycles, each time hoping to solve the three-body problem that would allow them to predict the movements of their sons and thus stabilize their society. Wang becomes engrossed in the game's challenges, which range from intellectual puzzles to ethical dilemmas. He meets historical figures from Earth's past who have been reincarnated in the game to aid or obstruct his progress. As Wang delves deeper into the game, he begins to notice parallels between the virtual Trisolaran society and the real world. The game's characters speak of an impending doomsday, a cataclysmic event that will be triggered when the three suns align. Wang realizes that this doomsday is an allegory for the Trisolaran invasion of Earth, a coded warning or perhaps a plea for help. Simultaneously, Wang starts to experience disruptions in his own research. His experiments in nanotechnology begin to yield inexplicable results, as if the fundamental laws governing matter have been altered. He suspects that these anomalies are related to the mysterious suicides he's been investigating and, possibly, to the Trisolaran presence on Earth. Wang's involvement in the game does not go unnoticed. He is contacted by members of a secret organization called the Earth Trisolaris Organization, ETO, 
who reveal that they have been monitoring his progress. They offer him a choice, join their ranks and prepare for the Trisolaran arrival or face the consequences of standing against them. As he navigates these moral complexities, both in the game and in reality, Wang comes to a startling revelation. The game is not just a simulation, it's a communication channel, a bridge between two civilizations, separated by light years but connected by a shared destiny. And he, Wang Miao, has become an unwitting ambassador in this cosmic dialogue. Having made the audacious decision to defy the Earth Trisolaris organization, ETO, Wang Miao finds himself plunged into a labyrinth of secrecy, ideology, and cosmic politics. The ETO, as he learns, is not a monolithic entity, but a complex web of factions, each with its own vision for Earth's future and its relationship with Trisolaris. Wang is clandestinely inducted into the ETO through a series of encrypted messages and covert meetings, he is brought to a hidden facility, far removed from prying eyes, where he is introduced to key members of the organization. Among them is Ye Wenjie, now an elderly woman but still a formidable presence. She is revered within the ETO as the Prophet, the one who first made contact with Trisolaris and set humanity on its current path. The ETO's inner sanctum is a place of paradoxes. It is both a scientific research center and a shrine a place where cutting-edge technology coexists with almost religious fervor. Wang is briefed on the organization's history, its structure and its long-term goals, which are as diverse as they are contentious. The Adventists. Led by charismatic zealots, this faction seeks the complete destruction of humanity, believing that the Trisolarans will bring a new, enlightened order to Earth. They view the impending invasion as a form of cosmic justice a cleansing of Earth's sins. The Redemptionists. This group aims to help the Trisolarans solve the three-body problem that plagues their planet. They believe that by doing so, they can negotiate a peaceful coexistence between the two civilizations. The Redemptionists are primarily composed of scientists and diplomats who hold on to the hope that reason will prevail. The Survivors, a minority faction within the ETO, the survivors intend to collaborate with the Trisolarans in exchange for the survival of their own descendants. They are pragmatists, focused on the preservation of knowledge and culture, even if it means the end of current human civilization. Wang is offered a place within the Redemptionist faction, given his scientific background and his demonstrated ability to think critically about the three-body problem. But the offer comes with a warning. Once he joins, there is no turning back. His life and work will become property of the ETO, and any betrayal will be met with severe consequences. As he contemplates his decision, Wang privately discusses with Ye Wenjie, who shares her ethical doubts and sees the ETO as a necessary but uncertain means to an end. Wang ultimately decides to join the ETO, but with a secret agenda. He plans to gather as much information as possible about the organization and its plans, with the aim of exposing them to the world. Acting on Wang's information in a high-stakes confrontation, the People's Liberation Army, PLA, clashes with the soldiers of the Earth Trisolaris organization, ETO, at a secret base. The battle is intense, involving advanced weaponry and strategic maneuvers from both sides. Amidst the chaos, a special PLA unit successfully captures Ye Wenjie, a key figure in the ETO and a pivotal player in Earth's interactions with the Trisolarans. Her arrest is a significant victory for the PLA, but a severe blow to the ETO. The People's Liberation Army, PLA, and the American military, represented by the enigmatic Colonel Stanton, find themselves in an uneasy but necessary alliance. Their target is Judgment Day a clandestine ETO ship that serves as a critical node in the Earth Trisolaris communication network. Intelligence reports indicate that the ship is scheduled to pass through the Panama Canal, providing a narrow window of opportunity for an ambush. The stakes are high. The ship's computer systems contain invaluable data on Trisolaran technology, strategy and intentions. However, 
there's a catch. The crew of Judgment Day has orders to destroy all records if capture is imminent, effectively erasing any chance of gaining insights into the Trisolaran plans. Time is of the essence, and a conventional assault could trigger the data wipe. It is Shi Qiang who offers a radical solution. Drawing upon his unconventional but often effective problem-solving skills, he suggests using a nanomaterial filament developed by Wang Miao. This filament is unique. It can slice through virtually any material with ease, but is fine enough to avoid damaging delicate electronic systems. Sha proposes creating a fence-like structure with the filament across the canal. As Judgment Day passes through, the ship would be cut apart, neutralizing the crew before they could initiate the data wipe, while leaving the computer systems largely intact. The proposal is met with a heavy silence. The implications are clear. Executing this plan would result in the death of everyone aboard Judgment Day. It's a grim calculus, weighing human lives against the potential to gain crucial intelligence that could tip the scales in the impending war against the Trisolarans. After a tense debate, the decision is made to proceed with Shai's plan. The moral weight of this choice hangs heavily on all involved, a somber reminder of the sacrifices and ethical compromises that seem increasingly inevitable as humanity prepares for its cosmic struggle. As Judgment Day enters the Panama Canal, the tension is palpable. Soldiers, scientists, and strategists hold their collective breath as they monitor the ship's progress. The nanomaterial filament is activated, forming an almost invisible fence across the canal. As the ship crosses the threshold, the filament slices through it with surgical precision. The vessel is cut apart, its crew neutralized instantaneously, and the computer systems remain largely undamaged. The operation is a tactical success, but leaves an indelible mark on the conscience of those involved. As teams board the dismembered ship to recover the computer systems, they are met with a haunting scene. A crew that met its end in the blink of an eye, unaware of their fate until the very last moment. Yet, amidst this grim tableau, there is a glimmer of hope. The data recovered promises to be a treasure trove of intelligence, potentially offering humanity a fighting chance against the Trisolaran threat. Colonel Stanton, Wang Miao and their PLA counterparts ponder the ethical and existential dimensions of their actions. They have gained valuable intelligence, but at a cost that cannot be measured solely in strategic terms. It's a moment that encapsulates the complex moral landscape that humanity must navigate as it faces an uncertain future in the cosmos. In the aftermath of the Judgment Day operation, a global alliance tasked with preparing for the Trisolaran invasion intensifies its efforts. However, a series of inexplicable setbacks in scientific research and technological development begins to raise alarm. Projects that once showed promise now yield inconsistent and baffling results. It's as if the very fabric of scientific understanding has been altered. Wang Miao, still serving as a key advisor to the Global Alliance, is called into a high-level meeting where a shocking revelation is made. The setbacks are not random. They are orchestrated disruptions caused by Trisolaran supercomputers known as Sophons. These Sophons are not merely advanced hardware. They are 11-dimensional constructs capable of manipulating physical reality at the quantum level. They have been sent to Earth to halt technological progress ensuring that humanity remains at a disadvantage in the impending conflict. The Sophons are nearly impossible to detect or counteract. They can interfere with experiments, alter data, and even influence human perception. Their presence explains the mysterious anomalies that have plagued scientific research, including the inexplicable phenomena that led to the suicides of several scientists, which Wang had been investigating earlier. The atmosphere is thick with tension and uncertainty. The Trisolarans, having monitored Earth's activities through their sophisticated Sophons, decide to send a chilling final message directly into the visual cortex of the People's Liberation Army personnel. Your bugs! Following this, all communications from the Trisolarans cease abruptly, leaving humanity in a state of heightened alert and existential dread. Ye Wenjie, 
now in custody but treated with a certain level of respect due to her complex legacy, is granted permission to visit the old Red Coast base. As she walks through the now deserted facility, memories flood back. Memories of her initial contact with Trisolaris, her hopes, her fears, and the irreversible chain of events she set in motion. She reflects on the weight of her past choices and acknowledges a sobering truth. Humanity will never be the same again. The innocence of a world unaware of extraterrestrial life is lost forever. Meanwhile, Wang Miao and his colleagues are found by Xu Qiang in a state of despair, drowning their anxieties in alcohol. Recognizing the futility and danger of this self-destructive behavior, Shai takes it upon himself to sober them up. He drives them to his hometown village in northeastern China, a place untouched by the complexities of Sofong's and interstellar politics. Once there, Xu Qiang draws their attention to a seemingly mundane but profound phenomenon, the survival of locusts. Despite all the technological advances humanity has made in pesticides and agriculture, the simple-minded locust continues to survive and even thrive. This observation serves as a metaphorical slap in the face for Wang and his colleagues. If a creature as basic as a locust can adapt and survive against the odds, why can't humanity? Returning to Ye Wenjie, who has made her way to the top of Radar Peak, the original location of the Red Coast SETI base, she stands there alone, watching the blood-red sun dip below the horizon. As the sky darkens, she utters a frase that encapsulates the gravity of the moment, a sunset for humanity. It's a statement filled with both resignation and a strange form of acceptance. Ye recognizes that the world is entering a twilight period, one filled with uncertainty and danger, but also potential for change and growth. Humanity may be facing its sunset, but as any poet or philosopher will attest, sunsets are not just endings, they are also precursors to new beginnings. The stage is set for the complex, multi-generational struggle that will define humanity's future, a struggle that each character will engage with in their own unique way, carrying the burdens of their past choices and the hopes for a new dawn. Subscribe to the channel for more sci-fi content.